we have decided that we're all at the same table right now and we're trying to play music around the table it's a little crazy but uh we um we're we're going to invite you in because to our our family this is how um i am actually from texas i, I was born in kingsville texas and um i want to invite you to the kitchen table because this is the way you would hear music we often perform for our families, and so you have to get ready for the next family party. Um, for Carol, Carol is from Belen, New Mexico, and she also prepared music for her family. Yeah. And I don't know about you, David. No music. <laughs> no music <laughs> in the family. Well, for us, it's, it's also about feeling that beat, like we heard in that first song, the... Um, uh, the rhythm wanting to make you dance, whether it's fast or slow. And there are so many different influences. So we're going to start off with a song that features David Garcia. Um, I'm going to say a little bit about this, this piece. Um, this is a piece that's called La Pedrera. Uh, I learned uh, from Mexico. Um, and of course, you know, there's music in my family. And I had a uh, um, grandparents and uh, parents that were musicos and everybody sang in our family and uh, you know it's part of the you know uh, our, our our family familial practices that we sing together uh on during the hard part times of the year uh and i want to i'll get more into it but we're going to do a song called la piedrera which is the, the stone the rock crusher this is a you know, polka that came out of um, san antonio area and there's Rock Quarry, which is there in San Antonio. This is a song uh, composed by by uh, uh, Santiago Jimenez, a flaco Jimenez. Okay, <laughs> Zoom is not the best for sound. <laughs> Thank you. That was amazing. <laughs> it does. It sounds it sounds awesome on our side. So, so thank you. I'm sure it even sounds way better in in where you're at. <laughs> So I hope you could tell that that polka kind of speeds up at the end, which when you're doing some fancy footwork on the dance floor that's going around, 
because that is the way we dance. You have to start getting fast. And people start showing up some zapateado. Um, it's just something that happens at our quinceañeras, our, our all kinds of dances. So, um, David is trying to speak, Gabino. Hello, everyone. Uh, like I was saying, um, uh, I'm from northern New Mexico, uh, but I uh, spent some time in Texas. Uh, I'm a longtime um, uh, violinist for the Matachines of Alcalde. Uh, I played Matachines for 20, what is my 24th year? But we're kind of wondering uh, if we're going to dance this year because of, uh, of COVID 19. Um, and so one of the, um, I'm just going to ask, Carol, you don't like computer to. Sure. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about the importance of community musicians uh, uh, and the responsibility of, 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 of doing music in ritual situations. Um, 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 and, uh, uh, you know, in, in looking at the work, the work of, of, um, of um, uh, Norba Cantan too, uh, who has done the work about the Matachines and, and Laredo. Uh, the other person who's talked about Matachines in Texas is um, Manuel Peña. And you know, um, you know his book, Musica uh, uh, Tejana, and his other subject of homework, uh, uh, La Orquesta uh, Mexicana, Mexicana, Mexicana. Uh, is um, a, a great reference to look, look at how um, there's a particular uh, wait, sorry about that. Um, that there's um, um, a great picture uh, in the in, in the book at the word um, that, that shows a, a, a group of Matachines um, um, in 1927 and what we know uh, about uh, the conjunto uh, Tejano is that uh, prior to, to the uh, inclusion of the accordion, um, uh, a lot of music music uh, um, was uh, uh, um, was based with, with string instruments, violins, and drum and 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 uh, and, uh, and and and, uh, and a drum called the tambora. And these are kind of more uh, mestizo, indigenous uh, traditions that uh, are, are, are particular uh, to not just south of Texas, but uh, um, uh, they're ubiquitous in, in Mexico. Um, in many places, uh, you may have talked about uh, the, the diffusion of the, of the, of the son. Uh, there's son uh, in, in Texas. There's son in New Mexico, there's son in, in, the, in the borderlands. And what's important about it is, is, is uh, a lot of the early, uh, you know, what, what became to him, to known in, in, in South Texas as Wapango, uh, has those roots uh, not only in the indigenous communities, but uh, they, uh, talking about the, 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 the African uh, and uh, the uh, Afro uh, uh, Caribbean uh, um, uh, influences as well in those areas. Um, we got to know, understand that the Caribbean was uh, a, 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 a vital place for all of the Americas. Um, I'm going to take these headphones off. But as probably you know, uh, ethnomusicologist Ani, uh, Dr. Uh, Alonso Munetti, who's here, could, could attest. Uh, you know, um, the roots of, of, of I think uh, Tejano music, um, you know, go back to you know the Wapango. They go back to the the son. Um, there was a lot of diffusion through uh, out you know uh, colonial New Spain of uh, various traditions, and we got to think of music both in you know the literary part of music. And also the musical part of music, um, and so you know, there's a lot of tradition about uh, uh, the versada, uh, you know, different uh, people writing verses and, and composing new verses. Uh, a lot of cancion uh, mexicana comes out of that that tradition of writing uh, uh, 
and, and composing and improvising verses on, on during familial uh, events. Oftentimes, you know, this tradition would be um, you know, when uh, uh, our particular uh, poeta or barda within a community would compose corridos that would uh, commemorate uh, the important people in that community, and they would attest to the, the, the historical uh, um, uh, uh, that, that there were historical actors within that community that were important to be remembered. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, uh, Leila, who is going to share with us a beautiful corrido that was uh, composed uh, by an important woman in, uh, in South Texas and all over the So one of the things that we do is in our families, sometimes we write corridos. Um, and uh, a corrido, I'm sure, I don't know if you all have already studied corridos. Have you already covered corridos in your class? Well, we write corridos and look how long this is. <laughs> but you don't write the corrido going, oh, I'm gonna have some indigenous sounds and I'm gonna, no, you write the story because you have to get the story right for your family or for the community. Of course, corridos were very, very famous in the Mexican Revolution, um, telling stories that people don't, didn't know about, but they also just gave information out at the plaza, right? They would tell what happened at some battle, some sort in the, in the Mexican Revolution. Well, in this case, um, my, mother, my mother is Sara Dueñas and de Flores. My dad is Flores and my mother, uh, her maiden name was Dueñas. She was born in San Diego, Texas. And uh, San Diego, Texas was, uh, it's very close to Alice, Texas, where this kind of music was going on. So in my family, it makes a lot of sense that there's a lot of music. I want to, um, we're gonna just share this corrido with you. Um, in, in our families, depending on what instrument people play, you know, it's very difficult to, if not everyone does the same thing. I'm sure David doesn't do the same music his parents do. He might, some of it, but we're always adding. So anyway, I was tasked with this. Uh, I had this task to do for my family when my mother retired and <clears throat> the city was saying, whereas Sara Duenas de Flores did this and did that. And so anyway, the family of course had to sing a song. So this is what it is. Um, and this corrido has, um, these overtones of social justice because growing up in South Texas was a very difficult place to be. Uh, my mother is, she was born in Duval County and Duval County is just, I would say it's, it's between uh, San Antonio and uh, Robstown. So it's, it's in this area, there was a lot of um, cotton picking going on in that area. Um, my mother's father was from Mexico and he was a musician and um, he was not putting up one he was not putting up with religion so he became a mason against uh, the Catholic Church he did not want his family going to the same Catholic Church every week he wanted them to rotate so that they would have their minds open because to him the Catholic Church duerme al pueblo it sleeps the community. So my grandfather said, okay, we're not gonna stay in Duval County because it's owned by George B. Parr. This guy owns everything. He's a mafioso. He's into bootlegging, he's into all this. And so we're getting out of here. So they go to Texas City. And in Texas City, my mother has this teacher called La Maestra Johnny. Well, she would put my mother under her desk because she didn't speak English and so Pretty soon my mother realizes, this song says that she realizes that there's so much discrimination and she's always trying to figure out how to do better, how to learn more English. Um, eventually my grandmother that is from uh, San Diego, Texas, she, they decide they're gonna go to Kingsville, Texas. In Kingsville, Texas, that was the only place they could go to the university. So she made sure that her kids they moved back to uh they moved to kingsville texas my grandfather built he was a carpenter they built a a 10-room house to uh it was a boarding house so that other girls from the big family could come and learn to go to, to go to college and so this song is about that it talks about 
having to go to a different entrance when they were at the university, uh, Texas A&I, the Mexicanos had to go through one door and they had to drink out of one faucet and, and how they got through. And eventually my mother becomes a teacher in Robstown of immigrant children. And so uh, there are a lot of things that she does. So this is, this is a corrido uh, de Sara Dueña de Flores that kind of covers her life. De marzo nació Sara Dueña en San Diego, la flor de South Texas, en Duval County, la mera capital del contrabando en la política. Pero su padre jamás le trabajó al justificar el gran controlador y a su familia a todos los llevó. A Texas City, donde Sara estudió. Aunque era niña, ella ya sabía cómo es la oportunidad. Ella ahorita iba, pero aprendía cómo ver a los demás. La maestra Johnny le hizo entender lo que le faltaba para aprender. La regañaba por usar su español y en el inglés al fin lo dominó. Y ya de grande su madre nos mudó para terminar en Kingsville High School para ir planeando cómo no estudiar. En el colegio de Texas say and I. Y el colegio su padre construyó una asistencia a alumnas de región. Mientras su madre fue la jefa de verdad, la respetaban con sinceridad, siempre observando la separación entre las razas y el anglosajón. Y otra vez se puso a estudiar al español para su comunidad. Ella fue pensando cómo cambiaría esta discriminación. Con sus compañeros prometían siempre seguir su educación. Sororities in Texas and I No permitían mexicanas, ay caray Pero registraron su propio suto sal Con sal al frente se hizo popular Siempre pensando en la igualdad Determinada en la educación Y a los 19 se hizo maestra de inmigrantes migratorios. Cinco de mayo fue muy especial que se casó con su nombre militar, Humberto Flores, educado oficial, 
Viajaron juntos, hicieron un buen par. Nacieron Lisa, la brinda y Angela. Y luego Leila y la Saralín. Al fin Humberto, el único varón. Los crió a todos con buena educación. Viajaron muy lejos, conociendo al mundo y a la humanidad. Cruzando la guana, siempre con sus hijos para su identidad. Pasaron años, su carrera ya brotó, para escuelas pobres un líder floreció, representando hispanos con su voz, tal como en Austin y en Washington. 1996 la eligieron de política, para su ciudad la primera hispana. Cambiando el voto con integridad. Y qué hermana esposa, madre orgullosa, honorada maestra. Líder elegida y una buena amiga, flor de la comunidad. I know that was really long. And that's what Corridos. Corridos tell a story <laughs> about somebody. And uh, so that was a song to, to my, my precious mother, who is uh, now her big thing is genealogy of she, uh, genealogy of the Southwest. She now lives in Corpus Christi, Texas. And she is 83. Um, and she was just here in New Mexico visiting, and she's like, when are y'all going to have a gig? <laughs> um, but I wanted to, uh, I don't know, can I share my screen, Gabino? Would that be okay? Yes? Okay. So I want to show you, um, when you think about uh, the history of, uh, let's see if I can open this up. When you think about the history of musicians the music doesn't stop at the border let's see if i can open this uh what do i need to do right here so i just want to show you that many musicians this man right here to the left that is my grandfather and here he is playing in an orquesta casino de monterrey so he's playing in monterrey he is playing as you saw in your readings um he's playing this big band music that begins to take shape now he had probably come to New Mexico, but he also went to Bisbee, Arizona. He worked in the mines while he was a musician on, as, as part of his other job. Eventually, he, uh, he comes to the U.S. and here's Roque Dueñas and the right. Eagles. Notice that's in English. So his name is Roque Dueñas. He's actually from Jalisco. And, um, but you notice it's changed to English. And he's up in the middle right here, right up top. He looks very much like my mother. And, uh, and here he is now with his jazz orchestra in the US. So he, what he brought from his music in Mexico didn't change. I have photos of him playing the bass, playing all kinds of instruments, but his main instrument is a trombone. Check him out on the bottom right. Now these guys are playing in the 1920s and 30s and so my, my grandfather was born, I believe in 1906. So if you look at the instruments they're playing, they were playing these instruments in Mexico. But here they wanted to show that they're, they're playing Scott Joplin's music. They're playing ragtime, they're playing blues and jazz. And here he is again. Now here, if you can look back in these pictures, this is, oh, this, this is in Mexico in 1926. He's in a brothel. And uh, 
And he's right here on a court, on a, he's got two trombones. So he's in Veracruz, Panuco, Veracruz. So you see how your readings match up with this guy's life. And, oh, sorry, that's the same one. And here he is right on the piano. This is here in the United States. The way that he met my grandmother was in Alice, Texas. And he was at some cakewalk. He was playing at some cakewalk and that's how he ended up meeting my grandmother whose life very much reflects the life of New Mexico. She lived on a land grant in Duval County, uh, her family, when she was younger. She's a Gonzalez. So um, anyway, that is my grandfather. You can really see that he, the way people shared music back and forth, there really wasn't this border, the kind of border we're talking about today. So, um, and the music didn't die. The music came with him. There are these pictures where he's playing the bass and he's in his 60s or 70s. Um, but once in the US, he's the one who decided they better go toward Galveston to get away from the racism that, of Mexicanos having to do all the hard, hard labor in, in Duval County. Um, and of course there were little enclaves all over South Texas, but out of discrimination, difficult times, music comes about, the arts are shared, family stories, family histories. And we're just really fortunate that we get an opportunity to, to be part of it. So anyway, I, I'm gonna stop my share here, but um, you know, I never, I've always just lived Tejano music and certainly my parents would uh, bring to the Pan American Club, they would bring um, Ramon Ayala, right down the road, 20 minutes away was little Joey La Familia. That guy would come all the time. And, and the main thing was the dance, the feeling of the dance. And you got to get right into that dance. Now I've just participated in it instead of studying so much, but um, um, so I'm going to hand it over to Davi. Well, thank you. Uh, for Duenas and Carol for uh, singing that wonderful corrido. Um, you know, one of the things I wanted to uh, bring and share with the class today is, you know, there's these, you know, Manuel Pena talks about these two uh, major, um, uh, um, you know, ensembles that kind of, you know, uh, are, are, is one's the conjunto uh, tejano and the other one's the orquesta. And we see, you know, how much, you know, the orquesta tradition, you know, is, um, is, is 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 not something that's that's purely Tejano or purely uh, 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 from uh, 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 you know um, from Tamaulipas or from uh, uh, Coahuila uh, or from New Mexico. Uh, it's a it's a, it's a it's a form that's that it's 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 growing in, in stature. You know, uh, like the 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 the, the, the genres of the music that they were playing. You know, uh, the the. The uh, the fox the foxtrot the the Charleston and sometimes faces the the danzones um, that were coming from 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 Cuba and stuff those places it's really important to think about you know you know thinking in terms of the banjo I have a good friend uh, her name is Patricia um, uh, Garcia Lopez she plays uh, they've been trying to re uh, uh, bring back the the banjo in uh, Oaxaca uh, which you know uh, within uh, you know uh, the music there is tip, think, p thinking about the banjo. We think of it solely as a, a you know a Eastern uh, a United States instrument, and it had so so much uh, diffusion. Um, and so we and we, what I'm thinking about to saying about you know uh, it has its origins in Africa, is that a lot of these instruments uh, at at this you know in the 1800s, uh, you see a, 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 an emergence of a lot of the new instruments. You know the accordion, even though it, it has um, reed uh, reed instruments, uh, uh, you know such as the harmonica. Uh, uh, you know, go back, you know, uh, almost a millennia. Uh, but the accordion itself, there's 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 debate whether the accordion was invented in Germany or in, in Italy. Um, but it makes its way into you know uh, into um, into the, the borderlands pretty 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 uh, af pretty soon after that. And so what I'm playing here is a, is a German, uh, uh, what they call a German diatonic accordion. And I'm going to show you two instruments uh, that, uh, these are the, the core of the conjunto uh, tejano. 
And, and I'm going to talk about a little bit the difference between Tejano music and Norteño music, or Musica, te, uh, musica te, uh, Norteña. And so um, um, one of the things is of a diatonic accordion is that uh, it has reeds inside. It's, it's, it's powered by bellows. Um, they use, sometimes they call this a squeeze box in many places. Um, I, I, my, the person I learned from was his name is Joel Guzman. Uh, and so I, I, I joined him playing the guitar for a long time in the Bajo Sexto. And uh, I learned, picked up some accordion from him. Um, he's an accordion player from, um, uh, from, South, uh, from, from, uh, from uh, Austin. And, um, and I'll talk about, you know, the, he started off as an accordion player. And then he became, uh, um, you know, uh, Little Joe's uh, keyboard player. So there's there's a kind of a, a shift where you know accordion gets uh, intro, you know, kind of the the orquesta and the, the conjunto tejano, as Manuel Cañet talks about during the Chicano movement, they 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 kind of uh, come together. And so there's a there's a there's a, uh, a renewal of 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 a, of um, of looking back at you know the music that had been disparaged for so much, the conjunto tejano, uh, the orquesta was always considered you know among some people as oh ese la música jaitón, you know, the, <laughs> the música de uh, de la sociedad of, of, of you know the uh, uh, and so the the acordeón and the bajo sexto which I'll show you in a bit were música de de la cantina, um, so this is a diatonic accordion. Uh, you know, a, a lot of this music, um, you know, um, uh, adapted the the wapango adapted to the accordion. There's lots of wapango that's played on accordion. This is called, this is a wapango. I'll just play a little bit. It's called, it's called El Lucero. <laughs> So that kind of, kind of like, uh, they call it like se, se, seis que altera. It's a kind of a, a ternary, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a grouping in threes and, and twos that comes from the son, the wapango. Uh, but this is an instrument that it's interesting because um, uh, Marco Cervantes, who teaches in, 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 at uh, UTSA in, in San Antonio, he, he used the accordion as a, as a way of thinking about, uh, you know, the border. Is that in one one way you have the bellows, uh, with the way that this is different from the piano accordion. The piano accordion, you press one note and you push in the bellows, it'll play one note going in and the same note coming out. On the diatonic accordion, it's kind of similar to a harmonica when you blow in and and, and you suck out. Is is that you have a different note and he he kind of used that to think about you know. Uh, you kind of have to think uh, you're not playing in a in, in a linear way. You're playing in, a, in across uh, many systems uh, of, of of keys. And so um, I wanted to share that as um, I'll play a, a, a music that was um, that that uh, uh, this is a, a, a mazurka called La, La Varsoviana, which was popular, you know, from you know uh, New Orleans to to uh, all the way to California and Mexico. Um, this is a uh, I'll play it here, and I'm going to be playing the bass part on the on the right hand. And so. That's one of the you know genres that came with you know from uh, from Europe the mazurka. It's very similar to the waltz. When people heard the waltz, they say oh one two three one two. They call un papa un papa. The mazurka is different from the you know the the waltz because it has a, a kind of a, a it's a ballroom. Uh, it, it's a dance that there's a focus on the second beat. So you're, you're going da, 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 one two three one two. It's on the two the the, the accent. But uh, what well, usually what happened with accordions, uh, you know, a lot of times accordion players could accompany themselves, you know, with the left hand here and the right hand here. Uh, what happened was, you know, as in South Texas and in many places in Texas, the accordions became um, um, very um, advanced in how they played. Uh, what they did was that they slowed down the music. They slowed down the, the polka rhythm. They slowed down the, 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 the waltz rhythm. 
and uh, which was a they were able to accomplish a lot more um, you know virtuosic uh, um, um, figures on the accordion. And that's one, I think, one of the main things about, you know, um, one of the innovators of this type of music was Tony de la Rosa, um, uh, Valerio Longoria. And Valerio Longoria, you have to think about these dances, uh, you know, prior in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, is uh, those early dances, these were instruments that were, didn't have amplification. Um, going off. Yeah, hold on. Um, there it is. Okay. So they didn't have amplification. Um, they were uh, instruments that uh, you know filled a small uh, a small hall with a lot of sound. Uh, this is the bajo sexto. It's kind of like thought of as the the you know the, uh, the 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 sibling of the accordion. And what this ended up doing, it's not a, often people just, uh, uh, think of it as a twelve string guitar. It's it's a it's a twelve string uh, guitar type, uh, the bajo sexto, and it has a lot of bass bass notes. I'll kind of play some of these notes. So it's a, it's you know, it's almost reaches the entire um, um, the, the 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 range of the piano nearly. Um, it has the, uh, that much range, but um, but usually you would have a uh, good ba uh, bajistas that would take up the role of the left hand on the on the, on the accordion. sound, um, you know, um, uh, um, the, the, the tolo noche was, you know, added later. Uh, the, the drum that, that could come from the, you know, the tambora continued. Um, the, so I wanted to just kind of mention, you know, there's those, those two things. And then also I wanted to talk about uh, 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 Longoria. You know, uh, typically a lot of the music that was played for these bailes, there was bailes, uh, two kinds of uh, bailes. There were, you know, family functions, uh, uh, funciones for the church, dances for the within the community. But there were also what they call bailes de negocio, and the bailes de negocio were you would go in and pay someone, you know, whether it be a ten cents per dance or five cents per dance. Uh, imagine going into instead of doing a cover charge. Uh, there would be a person going around the the sala that would collect uh, money from 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 these dances. And, you know, oftentimes these were dances, uh, you know, um, that could have been, you know, oftentimes in, in the brothels, these uh, bailes de negocio, and so you know, this music often had the sense of being disparaged because of those reasons. Um, but you know, talking about Tony de la Rosa, what he does is that you know they slow down the the polka. And uh, they're able to do uh, things that are a lot faster, and that's what becomes a, a style that they call the tacuachito. Oh, is that the, the music slows down, and the accordion becomes a lot more virtuosic. I'm not a virtuoso <laughs> accordion player, but we're going to play a song that is uh, um, that's uh, you know that has some some reference to the tacuachito. Uh, it's called Margarita, and uh, I wanted to say you know it's important to say that these early dances didn't have singing in them. No one was singing canciones rancheras at the dance. It was all instrumental. Wapangos, chotices, redovas. Uh, uh, um, and so, um, uh, um, um, Valerio Langoria, you know, is, is credited to bringing the, the microphone into these dance spaces and singing canción ranchera. And then later they started innovating and putting a cancion, uh, uh, Canciones uh, boleros, uh, different different uh, styles, and also bringing in later in the 1950s uh, the, the, the cumbia and, and, and others and others other uh, you know the danzón and, and other. But we're gonna do Margarita, and this is a, a it's a, a bilingual song. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna mute on this side. Margarita, Margarita, no me subas tan arriba que las hojas en el árbol no 
dan toda la vida. Desde aquí te estoy mirando, sentadita en tu ventana, qué bonitos ojos tienes, casero de la mañana. Ay, qué lástima, qué lástima, qué lástima me da de ver a Margarita que llorando está. Ay, qué lástima, qué lástima, qué lástima me da de ver a Margarita que llorando está. Qué bonito, como sabe. Margarita, Margarita. How are we doing on time? We have 10 minutes. Is that right, Gabino? Nine minutes. We have okay. nine minutes. Can you unmute, Gabino? Oh, thank you. Um, so no, um, that you know, uh, like I was saying, it's really important to think about um, the conjunto in um, in relationship to the orchestra. Uh, I played, uh, you know, um, I kind of come through to to Tejano music through my experiences here in New Mexico. I played eight uh, eight years for the El Hurricane Band uh, during the, the late two thousands with a uh, tenor saxophone, um, and I know some of the people you mentioned, you know, uh, Tobias Rene and. Uh, some other uh, musicians here I've, I've played. Um, and one of the, the things that's interesting is that, you know, a lot of times it's, it's thinking about, you know, these labels about what's Tejano, what's no Mexicano, what's uh, uh, Mexicano. Um, and a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, a particular public or marketing uh, that, 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 that uh, a lot of times, sometimes musicians won't say, well, it's all, it's all musica Mexicana, musica, uh, it's all art music and, um, and so, um, you know, uh, oftentimes, you know, Al Hurricane would go down to, to, to Texas and they would call him the Little Tejano. And that would, you know, he, he, he took it and, and, and you know, he, he liked it, you know, but he, he said, well, we got our own thing. And, and I think uh, there's a lot of inter, inter regional competition that goes on. Um, 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 and, uh, you know, 
thinking about you know um, how a lot of these are shared in regional traditions. Uh, perhaps you know uh, everybody. I don't know if everybody's familiar with uh, uh, Flaco Jimenez, uh, the uh, the bajo sexto player uh, for many years for Flaco Jimenez. Uh, his name is uh, Max Baca. Comes from Albuquerque. Um, and um, you know he has a, a, a group called the, the Tex Maniacs who have won multiple Grammys. Uh, you know, we're recording uh, uh, Conjunto Tejano. Uh, they're 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 not only a one generation; they're they're about three generations of musicos. Their their grandfather was a, an accordionist here in Albuquerque. There's a great polka; it's called Viva Albuquerque that was recorded. Um, um, and so, a lot of the things is in in terms of the shift from musica Tejana. I mean. Uh, Orquesta Tejana and Conjunto Tejano to this, um, you know, uh, this, this this kind of merging that happens during the Chicano movement where a lot of um, what became Tex-Mex, um, you know, um, you get to see uh, we, not only just, you know, talking about Selena, there's a important uh, artist such as Emilio uh, Navaira. Um, if, if you know, you've seen the movie Selena and you see that, 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 that concert in the Astrodome, uh, Emilio Navaira was the, the they were co-headliners on that show, um, and but oftentimes you know um, uh, in the, uh, thinking about you know he uh, he um, experienced a tragic event in his life. They were coming back from uh, Houston, uh, Emilio Navaira's group, and in the late late night, and they hit they they had a, a an accident in their bus, and so what's interesting about this is that. Oftentimes these musicians, they're playing all over Texas and they're, you know, you know, they're, a lot of times when people say weekend warriors, uh, it's, it's working class music because a lot of times, uh, you know, they're just trying to make it back Sunday so they can go back to work on Monday. Um, uh, and these, you know, Emilio Navarra is one of the biggest headliners, of, uh, you know, along with Selena in, in Texas. And so he ended up having, you know, a, a life changing uh, uh, accident. Uh, and you know, uh, trying to make it back because you know, oftentimes, you know, the venues that they play, you know, don't can't put up the money to, to host them there at, at the at the site during the night. You know, I, 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 I that occurred with us a lot of times at Al Hurricane, because you know we would end up driving to 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 Wyoming and then driving back, you know, after the gig, uh, back to Albuquerque, uh, you know, all the next night. And so it's a it's a it's a it's a love uh, of of doing this and um, and in the sense of moving is that uh, this music moved with migrant farmers. Um, you know, um, this music, um, uh, 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 where migrant farmers went from Texas to the, to the Midwest, to, uh, to, uh, to Wyoming, to California, uh, the musicians followed those migrant trails and usually played in all those places and took this music. So like in Saginaw, Michigan, they have a Tejano uh, music uh, festival. Uh, they used to every year, um, but it's it's the sense that uh, the music goes with the people. Uh, it's 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 a part of it's a it's a it's an important uh, aspect that keeps the cohesion of the community, even though they're you know they're uh, 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 migratory. And so um, you know Lydia Mendoza, who um, traveled all over the United States, traveled through New Mexico, um, you know. Um, so it's a it's a sense that you know this is I think about about these these regional uh, uh, these regional uh, um, um, uh, identifiers, and we gotta also understand that this music travels, and so it's not just in the state of Texas and not just in the state of New Mexico, but uh, uh, um, thinking about um, I'll let uh, uh, I know we have a little time I'll let uh, Dr. Flores uh, Duenas finish off and and Carol. Thank you, Davi. Thank you, Davi. Um, I hope that we're going to finish up with uh, Las Nubes, uh, a song that Little Joe y La Familia sing. And, and I think that one of the things that this music does is it, it really helps to bring that community voice, like what you're talking about, Davi, in these places where it, it's really important to regroup and figure out what is life about. And in Las Nubes, it says, you know, I, I'm done. I'm, I'm tired of suffering. Uh, this is a song about people working in the cotton fields and how difficult it is. And if we could just get a little rain, that would really help us to get 
we could get a break, a little break of this backbreaking work that we have to do, that we're timed as we're doing it, that we can't stand up. So this is uh, Las Nubes by Little Joy La Familia. And if you like, just jump up and dance a little bit here. Um, it, this is also a bilingual song, but we're only gonna do it in Spanish. So it says, we, we need that rain every now and then. We need a little break from this hard, hard, these hard times we're going through. Acabó, no me puedo resistir. Si voy a seguir sufriendo, mejor quisiera morir. Yo voy vagando en el mundo sin saber a dónde ir. Los años que van pasando, no me canso de esperar. Y a veces que estoy cantando, mejor quisiera llorar para seguir subiendo si nada puedo lograr. Las nubes se van pasando, se paran a lloviznar. Parece que se sostiene cuando a mí oyen cantar. Cuando a mi oyen cantar, se paran a lloviznar. Parece que alegra mi alma con su agua que traen del mar. Les digo a mis hermanos que, que les gusta tomar, que nunca se ve al vicio que los pueda dominar, que de este mundo tirando hay que saberlo cantar. Las notas que estoy cantando me nacen del corazón. Y con todo sentimiento las pongo en esta canción para ver si alguien descansa este pobre corazón. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much, Gabino, for inviting us to come to this class. And thank you for covering this topic. Y'all have a great rest of your class. Bye. Thank you so much, Leila. Thank you, David. I'm, I recorded this, so I'll, I'll, I'll share it with y'all when it's, when it's ready. Okay. Yes, please do. Well, I tried yeah. to get my mother on and yeah, I yeah, said, no, it's all good. I'll get yeah, it I, to you. I, I got you, so we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll share it with y'all for sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.